Hello and welcome to this video on how to compute composite reliability for free in JASP. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis and latent class analysis as well as topics in psychometrics and measurement. If this is something that interests you, please subscribe to this channel. Also check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to show you how you can calculate composite reliability coefficients for free in the JASP software, which you can download from the internet. It's a very user-friendly, very good statistical program that you can use for a whole bunch of different purposes, including reliability estimation. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to do here is open a data file. And that's also something that JASP makes very easy because you can directly open data files from SPSS, for example. So here I have an SPSS data set named composite reliability.sav. You can also open files in other formats. So that's very convenient. So here I have my data file and you can see I have four variables in this data file. Those are test score variables from a cognitive abilities test for which I would like to find out what composite reliability the score would have if I aggregated those four subscales, those four subtests into a composite score or sum score. Now, before we should do that, before we should just go ahead and calculate, for example, Cronbach's alpha or McDonald's omega as a composite reliability coefficient, we should first of all make sure that that's actually appropriate. And so composite reliability coefficients such as Cronbach's alpha and McDonald's omega require the scale to be unidimensional, meaning in the sense of factor analysis, a single factor model should fit these four variables. So there shouldn't be more than one latent variable underlying those scores. And more specifically than that, even for Cronbach's alpha, we also have to assume that those four variables are essentially tau equivalent, which means not only do they have to measure only a single factor, but also they have to have equal factor loadings. So the unstandardized factor loadings have to be equal across those tests. That's not required for McDonald's Omega, but McDonald's Omega still requires those variables to be unidimensional, meaning they should only measure a single factor. So therefore, before we compute composite reliability, we should first of all, make sure that that assumption is reasonable and that we don't have a multidimensional scale for which Cronbach's alpha or McDonald's omega may not at all apply. So how can we check that? Nicely, in JASP, we can also calculate or estimate factor models. And so when you click here on this factor option, you can see that there is principal component analysis, exploratory factor analysis and confirmatory factor analysis. And so we can specify a confirmatory factor analysis model and obtain a test of model fit in uh, JASP here. So we're going to click on that. And then you can see that uh, JASP makes this very easy for you using point and click so you don't have to write any code. The Lavan syntax code from the Lavan package in R runs in the background and we'll see later that we can also save the Lavan syntax for the model command here which is useful as well. So here we can specify a single factor model by selecting all the variables from our list here and then adding them to factor one. You could have another factor if you had a multidimensional model you could add more factors here. But in our case, our assumption is that there's only a single factor. And so therefore, this is sufficient. You can already see on the right hand side, a chi-square test of model fit already appeared. The 
factor model here has a chi-square of 0.552, two degrees of freedom and a p-value of 0.759. So that is a good sign because this means that a single factor model for these data is not rejected. Now notice though that in this model, we are not assuming equal loadings. So this is a so-called congeneric factor model where the variables can have different loadings. And so you can see that from the next table, parameter estimates, where it says factor loadings. And here under estimates, you can see that those factor loadings are not constrained to be equal across variables, so they can be different. And so therefore, this assumes that the measurement structure is not essentially tau equivalent necessarily, but that it's only congeneric. So for this measurement model, you could use McDonald's Omega as a composite reliability coefficient. But maybe we also want to know whether the factor model here is essentially tau equivalent. So that would be parsimonious, that would be useful if we could assume that the variables have equal factor loadings and that we can use Cronbach's alpha for uh, uh, calculating composite reliability. So testing a model of essential tau equivalence could also be useful. Now, um, here, JASP doesn't have a direct option for constraining those factor loadings to be equal, at least not currently. But what we can do is we can click here on the modeling options. And so when we go down here to the additional output tab, then we can click on this little option that says show Lavan syntax. And then when we click on that, then in our output, we will find at the very bottom the syntax command for this factor model with unequal loadings. And so what we can do now is we can, uh, calc we can copy this syntax from the output in Lavan. And then we can go to a different option where we can estimate a more complicated factor model. And that's under the structural equation modeling option that you can see here on, uh, in the menu. So when we click on that and we click on structural equation modeling, then we can specify our own user defined factor model, which is then um, allows us for more flexibility in um, calculating those things. So here you can see that it's already open on the left hand side. And so what we can do is we can just simply paste our Lavan syntax here into this field. So this is what I copied from the previous output. And so then this would give us the exact same model as before in the factor analysis option when we hit control enter. So then you can see that this syntax will be executed and in the output window on the right hand side, you then get your chi-square test again here 0.552, two degrees of freedom and the p-value. Here the loadings are scaled differently. So here one loading is fixed to one and the other ones are estimated. Whereas in the previous option, the factor variance was fixed. So the loadings here look different, but Loadings are arbitrary anyway, and what is important is only that they are different. So under this um, congeneric model, you can see factor loadings are different, but not very much. So in this example, they're all very close to one. So constraining them to one might actually be okay, meaning assuming essential tau equivalence. So how can we do that? We can do that by changing the loadings here, which are labeled as lambda 1, 1, lambda 1, 2, lambda 1, 3, and lambda 1, 4. And so rather than having them as labels, we could just simply fix them to one. So we replace the label by one times the loading, and then all the loadings are fixed to one. And so now I can re um, execute this syntax by again clicking control and then enter or hitting control enter. And so then you will see on the right hand side that now all factor loadings are constrained to be equal, assuming essential tau equivalence. And you can see that the chi-square test then is different 
for the model 1.506, five degrees of freedom and a p-value of 0.9. So the chi-square p-value is actually even better than before because really here there was no significant difference between the loadings and so therefore a model of essential tau equivalence here fits also. So we can now use Kronbach's alpha if we wanted to because this uh, factor model has equal loadings or at least the assumption of equal loadings does not have to be rejected. So now where can you find your composite reliability? You can click here on the reliability option in the menu and then unidimensional reliability. Again, we're gonna select our four variables from the list and we're gonna move them over into this field variables and then when we click on analysis we can see that the default coefficient here is mcdonald's omega that will be provided by jasp automatically along with a 95 percent confidence interval and then we can also choose cronbach's alpha and there are additional reliability coefficients according to gutman that are similar and so here you can see when we look at mcdonald's omega and cronbach's alpha both of them here are identical in this example because in this case the variables were essentially tau equivalent and so you could apply either McDonald's Omega or Cronbach's Alpha. And it was useful for us that we tested the assumption that underlies Cronbach's Alpha, namely that a single factor model with equal loadings has to be assumed for these data. Now, in other cases where you don't have essential tau equivalence, so where the factor loadings are different, you wanna opt for McDonald's Omega because if you have unequal loadings, then Cronbach's Alpha may underestimate the reliability of the scale or composite, and so therefore McDonald's Omega in that situation would be a better choice. You can see here in this case, it doesn't make a difference. The point estimates are identical and the confidence intervals are also very similar for both these types of measures. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about how to calculate composite reliability and estimate factor models in the JASP software. If you did, please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.